of the way you described that the packet um, product uh, edge metal allowing a customer to crawl, walk, run into the into the cloud. Another cool thing about it is it's got a suite of APIs, so it's programmable. So you're starting to like get uh, get 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 enrolled into this notion of being software defined, which which I'd love to talk about. Maybe just give a couple of thoughts around around your vision around programmable infrastructure. Yeah, so I'll start at the highest level again with the vision we haven't yet achieved. Um, you know, we, we want to evolve from while we've we've migrated to cloud, we do use a number of providers. You know, we still though do uh, some about some amount of you know legacy typical legacy provisioning. Now we're not buying servers much anymore uh, and having to rack and stack. We've we've got beyond that, um, but we do still have to go um, provision servers. Pro, you know, uh, through software or through through commands. Um, and same with, you know, go configure network ports, et cetera. But where we're headed is, and where we want to be is that, you know, really everything's exposed via different APIs uh, available to cloud or to our internal consumers, uh, developers or product folks, whatever. And again, the vision is more around an API per cloud. Uh, the idea being that a developer could say, I want to, and, and even over time, perhaps not even having to pick which cloud, but by saying I have a service I want to deploy with ABC characteristics, you know, ultimately it'd be nice uh, if programmatically it selects which target based off of a number of, uh, of attributes that are put in by a consumer. But the whole idea is to eliminate the manual provisioning uh, that's currently in place to go provide those resources and literally put it in the hands of, of the developers and say, I need ABC. And programmatically and through software, it goes and provisions servers and provisions storage and provisions and configures the port and the firewall and the monitoring uh, setups and the security controls, et cetera. I mean, our, that's where we're striving towards. Uh, so that's at the very high level of just in terms of the, the use case that we're after. On the network specifically, you know, as I mentioned, the network is our foundation today. Uh, it's been a, it evolved from, I'd say, four or five years ago. It was a mix of, of, of uh, a mix of parts around the world from different vendors, with all kinds of different configurations. And it was clear that we weren't going to be able to scale with that. So we did a an evolution, kind of the first version of an evolution, where we got to, as I mentioned earlier, a standard set of components, standard configs, all around the world. Uh, and we, by the way, we had service issues before and we, if you had an outage, you had to find the right person. So we eliminated all that and we got to where standard config, standard components, standard deployment templates, standard cabling, standard everything. Uh, and as we got every building up to the standard, we've been able to scale, as I mentioned, we don't have to hire people. Our, in, our mean time to recover when there is an outage is very high. We've got redundancy built in. Uh, we've achieved our four nines and it's actually been a quite quite good and, it's, and some would say well maybe well if it's not broke you know why why fix it and it's not about that it's about where we we're now in the process of designing for the, the next version uh you know time flies and uh well, about a year year and a half from now we'll start having components come up for refresh again and we don't we want to evolve not just go refresh all these parts you know we take a step back and uh, we're getting educated and learning more and more about SD-WAN and SD-WAN providers. And the initial analysis um, would show from a financial standpoint, there's really not a ton of benefits for us. But if the, digging deeper than just financial, uh, we start looking at what are the business benefits of moving to more of a software-defined uh, network. It's become clear to me, and we're not experts yet, we will be. There are some people on my team who are experts. I'm personally continue to get educated in the space, but what's become clear to me is the next version of our global network will be uh, based on SD-WAN and, and the benefits are around their visibility, uh, getting software to control traffic flow, to be able to see much deeper what's going on. Again, to tie into this vision of automation, uh, a potential, I think a real potential and opportunity to collapse the stack. Right now we have different components that 
our firewalls and we have different components that are VPN and there are providers in the SD-WAN space that can collapse that down and actually make the business case powerful, uh, even more powerful than, you know, may have been thought in the past. And, and to where you started the question is like, you know, I think we're going to a world where it's going to be software defined everything um, and where you want to get intelligence out of the components and out of one-off configurations from engineers and abstract that where software controls and in the network, same thing. Um, you know, right now we have good redundancy, as I mentioned, we have primary and secondary and we've kind of automated failover, but there's a lot more that can be done um, leveraging software intelligence to optimize all of that traffic flow to ensure again that you're ultimately your business outcomes are better. Uh, that you never have a downtime, that you never have interruption, that you proactively start sensing, proactively start acting, uh, where software takes control. Um, you know, instead of, you know, the future is less about alarms and alerts in my mind and people responding and having really great monitoring as than it is more and more the future is going to be that intelligence from the software itself and then taking action itself to prevent uh, service interruptions in the first place. So in this in this new software is eating everything world, which which is cool, right? Software is eating the world. Software is eating has eaten compute, has eaten storage, eating storage, eating network. Uh, now you know thanks to thanks to Equinix eating the data center, eating <laughs> data center infrastructure. Uh, this is a whole new paradigm on how we're working as engineers, as as product people, and moving towards agile and and DevOps and DevSecOps. Um, what if what if what are the what are the some of the things that that you're putting into uh, as principles or or maybe just you know new kind of par new uh, initiatives uh, within your teams to kind of support this this change this you're changing things so quickly now it's agile it's DevOps so like yeah just talk about that for a minute sure so I think as a as an IT organization we are we are on the path and we we claimed you know we put a stake in the ground that with some targets around, we want to become an agile organization. Um, and I think, you know, one of the foundational building blocks to becoming an agile organization is you have to have a DevOps, DevSecOps uh, structure in place, not just the uh, team structure. This is more importantly about your tooling and workflows and how you enable um, CI, CD pipeline management and continuous delivery of new code. Like you have to have the technology and infrastructure in place in order to enable agile workforce. So we've been working on, you know, DevOps, DevSecOps uh, workflows for the past year and a half or so. And we've got a number of initiatives on the plate this year to have the foundation done from a technology standpoint. Uh, and many of the apps are already kind of there where those workflows are in place and, and we're enabling those teams to move to agile as quickly as they can consume 